Let's go to the Celtics and Cavaliers series. The Cavaliers absolutely torched the Celtics tonight. Donovan Mitchell reminds everybody why he is such a huge asset in this league. That dude can score with the best of them. He is awesome. And Darius Garland and Evan Mobley both actually showed up tonight offensively to go along with him. And this is the mix that the Cavaliers have been waiting for. Mitchell, 29 points. Mobley, 21 points. Garland only has 14, but extremely efficient with those 14 points. And Karis LeVert, 21 off the bench. Exactly what the doctor ordered for the Cleveland Cavaliers. They played really well tonight. And Cleveland should be able to score with anybody. They have that kind of talent. It just never clicks. That Donovan Mitchell-Darius Garland pairing never clicked. Mobley might finally be finding some offensive game here. I think that's credited to Jared Allen being hurt to where he's the lone big on the floor. He has a little more space to operate 10 foot and in where he likes to operate from. His outside shot has not come along as much as the Cavaliers hoped it would. But I think Mobley is kind of fighting his groove, being the only big on the floor for the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavaliers have the pieces. It just hasn't looked right all year long, even though they're four seed. They beat up on a lot of bad teams. I think they had an almost perfect record against like the bottom eight teams in the league. And that really helps your record. That really helps your seeding a lot. But the Cavs kind of made it all click together tonight. I'm not sure they'll be able to do it again because it doesn't happen often. But they looked really good. Boston tonight, it's just very obvious that they do miss Kristaps Porzingis. Everybody thought this would be an easy series, and it still might be even without Kristaps Porzingis. But Kristaps really controls the middle for this team. He really helps them out defensively, and then he is such a mismatch offensively. I'm sure Mobley would be able to cover Porzingis about as well as anybody else in the league in this series in particular, but he is just such an advantage whenever he gets a mismatch and such a weapon offensively that really helps open up everything else if he's in the middle or if he's pulling everything away, being a big that can shoot, pulling Mobley away from the basket. Kristaps would be huge in this series, but he's not there, and Boston needs to step up and win this one anyways and get enough rest to where they can take on New York or Indiana. That's right, have not given up on Indiana yet. Not a great plan. Tatum and Brown both only go 7 of 17. That's not fantastic shooting percentage. This is the kind of game where you would like to see Jason Tatum prove he has some Mamba mentality in him and really take over and say, no, guys, we are not losing this game at home. Climb on my back. I am a fantastic player. I'm a top five player in this league, and tonight I need to prove it. I think Jason Tatum is phenomenal. I think he is fantastic. Very, very talented guy. You can't say enough nice things about Jason Tatum. But the one thing that you can knock him on is he seems to not always be aggressive when he should be. He seems to be timid whenever there's a big chance, a big opportunity to step up and prove that he is that guy through and through. And tonight could have been an opportunity for him to do that. But he doesn't go all aggressive tonight. He doesn't push the envelope. He doesn't try to get it done by himself. Really take over a game like everybody thinks he is capable of. He doesn't do it tonight. And tonight was an opportunity for him to do that. Last point I will make here. It's just kind of weird that the Celtics seem to always drop games at home in the playoffs. They don't protect the parquet, as Boston fans would say. As much as you would like to see, you would think the Boston Garden would be a place that absolutely rocks to play in. The fans are fantastic. They're totally into it. They all know ball. They all know what to do to make the other team uncomfortable. You would think Boston would be very tough to beat in Boston, but that hasn't been the case over these Jason Tatum's, Jalen Brown years. So it's just kind of weird, something to watch. If the Cavaliers get one of these next two, and we go 2-2 heading into Game 5, it's anybody's series because all the pressure, all the pressure would be on the Boston Celtics. They're the number one seed. They're the ones that had one of the best point differentials in league history throughout the regular season. They're the ones that have been talking a lot of smack. They're the ones that are favored to win the championship at the moment. All the pressure is on Boston. And if they come out flat in game three and Cleveland gets another one, it is game on.
would love to see Boston get in a real series and let's see what this team is really all about because they have just destroyed everybody throughout this entire year. I would like to see Boston in a bunch of crunch time games to see how they respond, see if they're really ready for this moment. Because if they can't go win a championship this year, whenever the Eastern Conference is weak and banged up and it should be kind of a cakewalk to the finals and then Denver is struggling and you're going to play either a young OKC a young Anthony Edwards and Timberwolves team that would have no finals experience or a Mavericks team that has no finals experience, has not gotten to that level of success. Again, Denver's down 0-2. Maybe they come back. But Denver goes down in a very weak East. If not this year, then win for Boston. So Boston needs to figure this out. Boston needs to tighten it up defensively. They need to make it happen without Porzingis and by themselves time for Porzingis to come back in the Eastern Conference Finals.